okay please pay attention if you are an adult who has recently been through an eating disorder is caring for someone with an eating disorder who is an adult or is in the process of relapse I very specifically say that this is about adults with eating disorders because I have a bee in my bonnet about it and I really want some help so I'm expecting lots of comments below um, just to see if we can start a bit of a, a movement and a bit of dialogue around this. So I recently had a conversation with a medical practitioner who has spent the last 15 years dealing with people with eating disorders and she said to me very candidly in all this time that I have been dealing with adults with eating disorders I can honestly tell you that of all the people that have gone through inpatient treatment I have not found a single person who has maintained over two year period of um, post being out of the uh, inpatient unit has not maintained a sensible eating behavior pattern and being able to maintain their weight um, in a way that you would hope that they would do if they were fully recovered. Now, although many of us will think, well, that's no great surprise, I think it's it's certainly quite a revelation to hear that from a medical practitioner and say, actually, that's an indication that this system just isn't working. So eating disorders units, absolutely they have their place. I am not here posting because I think they are wrong. They are critical and Early intervention, early intervention, I've said it before and I say it again, it is absolutely vital for anybody, child or adult, that starts to fall into disordered eating behaviour um, and becomes in a chronically ill state and needs to get on top of their eating disorder. So early intervention, yes, vital. But I do not believe that inpatient treatment works for everybody and in particular I think there is a difficulty when it comes to adults um, where you have got those that perhaps are no longer living at home with parents because they are beyond that age and perhaps they may not even have spouses or partners at home in, the own, in their own home that they live with. They might have a, a circle of friends but they might spend, if not all their time on their own, they might spend a great deal of time on their own at home. Now, how well adjusted are we expecting those people to be when they come out of inpatient care back into the community, but that that community is primarily themselves, perhaps for 80% of the time, perhaps for more. We know that social, social isolation is a bigger issue, and it's not just for elderly people, it's for people across the board. There are more of us that haven't kind of fallen into the um, steady uh, expected pathway of getting married in our early 20s, having children and then living the 2.4. So more of us have gone down perhaps a career path and so that we've not just followed all those natural steps. So what that stands to mean is, particularly if that person has then had an entrenched eating disorder or mental health issue for a number of years, it may well mean that they aren't in a steady, robust relationship and they may not have friends, neighbours in their kind of close community that can help support them once they do come out of an inpatient environment. So what can we do to make sure that that person, whether they have chosen to go into inpatient and then come out and carry on on their own, or whether they don't go into inpatient at all and they are an adult trying to battle their way through an eating disorder independently, how can we ensure that they have the steps, the tools, the little kind of benefits and um, you know angel on the shoulder that just reminds and keeps them on track to help nudge them toward the world of recovery every day and that's kind of every day when they wake up in a positive mindset or a negative one it's the day when they're thinking oh you know what I, I did eat a really big meal and actually I've still got quite a full stomach from last night but shall I st start today with breakfast yes you should bloody start with breakfast but actually because that adult lives on their own those days might be a little bit more challenging or those days when something just doesn't go right in the world of work. What I'm after from this post is really to kind of challenge the thinking and say, what are we doing, what are we not doing around adult care um, and, and that kind of prolonged approach to recovery that can keep adult survivors of, you know, whatever you want to call them, warriors, survivors, um, those battling with eating disorders, 
How can we help one another to stay on track and build a really strong community? What are the things that would have made a difference for you? Is it kind of support through eating? Is it support through shopping? Is it mealtime um, guardianship? Is it friends popping in? Is it gifts? Is it, you know, what kind of validation and support is it? Um, would really, really welcome your commentary about that below. I have a, have a sense that, you know, this is where the debate needs to be at, particularly about adult recovery and um, being able to maintain that, particularly in this noisy world when, when we're alone, when we're in a negative emotional or mental health place, the one place we go to if we haven't got human contact is social media. And you know what? When social media is all full of clean eating and, oh, look at that pretty picture of this, this really healthy eating that I'm posting on Instagram. And, you know, I'm only eating this because it's vegan and I'm eating this because it's uh, intermittent fasting and it's less than 300 calories. That's not going to be helpful for somebody that's recovering from an eating disorder. So what is helpful? What is going to move us forward to help somebody who has their historic eating disorder demons to say, whether I live alone, whether I live with a, 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 you know, a family or a spouse or a partner or have got great friends, how do I keep myself on track? So um, comment below if you can and um, please contribute because I'd really like to start to circulate some of that commentary and I've got a few people lined up for a future webinar that I want to do about this um, and, and really see if we can't kind of campaign more in this arena. So thanks ever so much for watching and I look forward to hearing your comments.